Greetings. Welcome to another special broadcast. This is part three of the series that we have entitled The Greatest Lie Ever Told by Ted Wilson to the Worldwide Seventh-day Adventist Church. Now, why are we bringing this to your attention? Well, first of all, we are told by way of review in both the book of Matthew, more specifically chapter 24, and 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, in describing the signs of the times, in describing the events that will take place prior to the second advent of Jesus Christ, we are told that deception will be the main thing. And so that is one of the reasons why we are bringing this to your attention. Another reason is because Jesus is the light. Jesus is the truth. And there is no darkness in him. And so no lies if is of Jesus. All lies originated from Satan. And so therefore, when we hear lies, when we hear our leaders standing up before the worldwide Seventh-day Adventist Church and telling us, that they are not and has never or they have never been involved in ecumenism with Rome, then we have to question that. We have to talk about it. When we can see clearly, we can go on the web, we've been, covers, we've been covering m many articles for years now, for the past few years, showing you indeed how deep the apostasy is within the general conference how they are indeed in bed with Rome but yet our leaders want us to believe something else other than what we have been experiencing so again as I mentioned this is part three of Ted Wilson greatest lie let's have a word of prayer loving Lord our Father God which art in heaven help us to know the way the truth and the life uh, we know, Father, we, indeed that we are living the last days because of the increase in wickedness in men, uh, how the heart has become cold, and also because of how deep the apostasy is within our ranks. So help us, Father, to uh, know the truth as it is found in uh, Jesus Christ. In His name we pray. Amen. For those of you who are wondering, uh, how come I did not bring part two to you yesterday as I had promised? Well, it is because I have been uh, traveling, at least I was traveling. And uh, for those of you who are wondering, where is pastor at this time? I am in London at the moment. And if you would like to know where we're gonna be meeting this coming Sabbath by God's grace in London, let me know and I will be more than happy to share that information with you. In the book of Daniel chapter 8, we are told in verse 11, speaking of the Antichrist, the Bible tells us, Yea, he magnified himself even to the most or to the prince of the hosts, and by him the daily sacrifice was taken away, and the place of his sanctuary was cast down, and an host was given him against the daily sacrifice by reason of transgression and it cast down the truth to the ground and it practiced and prospered. A host was given to him. Now I may use this to apply it to the movement of the papacy. How the papacy is bringing all the religions, has brought all the religion together under its umbrella, a host of them, to cast the truth of God to the ground. And as Revelation chapter 17 describes that harlot woman with daughters, they have come together with mother to cast the truth of God to the ground. And to cast the truth to the ground, it also means to reject Jesus Christ because Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. That is the power that we are told in these last days, as the reformers have done, as the Waldensians stood against that power, 
to expose in these last days. Have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather expose them. It is Romanism. We are told that works for popery, or that works for the devil, rather. The Vatican, this is where we find Satan's seat. And that is the power that the Bible describes as the Antichrist that we need to expose in these last days. Listen to what we read here. Volume 4 of Spirit of Prophecy, page 53, paragraph 1. It is one of the leading doctrines of Romanism that the Pope is the visible head of the universal Church of Christ, invested with supreme authority over bishops and pastors in all parts of the world. More than this, the Pope has abrogated the very titles of deity. He styles himself Lord God the Pope, assumes infallibility and demands that all men pay him homage. Thus, the same claim urged by Satan in the wilderness of temptation is still urged by him, by the Pope of Rome, through the Church of Rome. And uh, that is also by Satan. And vast numbers, that's the host there, as we read a moment ago from uh, Daniel chapter 8. And vast numbers are ready to yield him homage. But those who fear and reverence God meet this heaven-daring assumption as Christ met the salutation or the salutations of the wily foe, which, as God said, as Jesus said in Luke 4, verse 8, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. And God has never given a hint in his word that he was appointed any man to be the head of the church. Keep those words in mind. God has never given a hint in his word that he has appointed any man to be the head of the church. But today we have the same system within Seventh-day Adventism. What is the system? The system of Romanism. The Pope is the supreme ruler. That is the system. Today, we have the same system within our own church. As Ted Wilson stood up and declared that there's no way we're going to talk about the Babylonian poison during the GC session, in spite of the fact that Seventh-day Adventists, conscientious Seventh-day Adventists, needed help because they were losing their job. Today we have the same mentality and we are not supposed to question those leaders. A host, we are told, was given to him. Gathering all the religions together, Romanism. And as we looked at this picture before, this is a good illustration of what Spirit of Prophecy just told us. And also what we read in Daniel 8, verse 11 and verse 12, that host that was given him against the daily sacrifice. So whoever joined Rome in any form, shape of ecumenism is doing just that. They are casting the truth in the, to the ground. And as it says, by reason of transgression, which, which means lawlessness there. Joining Rome in this rebellion against God is the same as joining Satan in this rebellion against God. That is a good picture of this. As we see our leaders one more time, Ganun Diab and Ted Wilson, meeting with Rome's agents. And as that same agent of Rome gave to Elder Wilson, this book that came straight from the Vatican, Let Mutual Love Continue. Yet our leader, Ted Wilson, will come out and tell us that no, we are not involved in ecumenism. Yes, but let me ask a question. What does ecumenism mean according to Rome? What does Rome want? What does it want to gain 
from ecumenism? Well, remember, Rome is the author of ecumenism. God is not the author of it. Satan is also behind Rome. Let's allow Rome to tell us what ecumenism is. This is from the Vatican website, Decree on Ecumenism. Unitatis Redingte Gratio. The restoration of unity among all Christians is one of the principal concerns of the Second Vatican Council. What is it now? The restoration of unity. Who calls for this? For the restoration of unity. Was it God? No. It is Vatican II that calls for this. Unity, reconciliation. Again, that's the reason why you see our leaders there are with Roma. They are agents of Roma, including Ted Wilson. Let's continue. The restoration of unity among all Christians is one of the principal concerns of the Second Vatican Council. The term, the term ecumenical movement indicates the initiatives and activities planned and undertaken. There it is. The Vatican is telling you what that means according to the various needs of the church and as opportunities offer to promote Christian unity. There are, first, every effort to avoid expressions, judgments. Notice, avoid expressions, judgments, and actions which do not represent the condition of our separated brethren with what? Truth. And what else? Fairness. And so make quote-unquote, mutual relations with them more difficult. Then dialogue between competent experts from different churches and communities. So Rome tells us here to avoid expressions of judgment, actions, because those things will make mutual relationships more difficult with Rome. What does Rome mean by that? In other words, just like Spirit of Prophecy tells us, it is a rejection of Bible truth that draw men to infidelity. The infidelity there is the Pope of Rome. You have to reject the Bible in order to be in mutual relation with Rome and with Rome's agent. How many seven Adventists will buy that? That we are not involved and have never been involved by? We, I mean the General Conference has never been involved in ecumenism. Well, let Rome speak for you. Listen, at these themes or at these meetings, ecumenical meetings, which are organized in a religious spirit, each explains the teaching of his communion in greater depth. What? We have to go to Rome to give an explanation, to be taught by Rome. And we will understand things better because we have joined Rome. That's what Rome is saying here. That's what ecumenical movement is about. Let's continue. And brings out clearly its distinctive features. In such dialogue, everyone gains a what? A truer knowledge and more just appreciation of the teaching and religious life of both communions. In addition, the way is prepared for cooperation between them in the duties for the what common good of humanity which are demanded by every Christian cons consci conscience and wherever this is allowed, there is prayer in common. So there it is, brothers and sisters. So as we see our leaders one more time meeting here with Roma, don't listen to what the leaders tell us. Don't listen to what Ted Wilson tells us. Read what Rome says. Read what Rome is telling you what that means. Because there's no way we can be true reformers and be meeting with Rome. Can you imagine, can you imagine Martin Luther meeting, John Huss meeting with Rome and Rome's agents? No, brothers and sisters. Well, let's put it this way. Can you imagine? Again, circle there. This open air garden chapel is a sacred place that does what? Draws its inspiration from quote unquote Saint Francis of Assisi. 
from Pope Francis and the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. And it launches a message for the reconciliation between mankind and nature, a ring of almost suspended light that symbolizes the light of the world and the metaphor circle of Sora Madre Terra, which means our sister Mother Earth. So when you join Rome under this uh, circle, the so-called Ring for Peace, whom are you worshipping? Well, they tell you here, the so-called Sister and Mother Earth. And what is that? Paganism at its best, worshipping nature, pantheism, brothers and sisters. And we were told, in these last days, Paganism will make a comeback again. And where have we seen our leaders as well? Recently, as we discussed from this article that came out from the Seventh-day Adventist North American Division, May 24th, 2023, Patmos Chapel, grand opening, opening doors for community engagement. On the left side of your screen, we can see our leaders there under the ring under the ring for peace. To the right, we see the pagans, Rome agents, also under the rings. Yes, ring for peace. And what does it mean again to be sitting under that according to the Pope of Rome, according to Laudato Si, the garden, the, the living chapel? It means you are worshiping sister, mother earth. Yes. Our leaders want us to worship. Now, it's interesting, worship Mother Earth, it's interesting how they call this new chapel Patmos. Patmos, Patmos. Remember, the Apostle John was exiled to the island of Patmos. Now, he was not on a picnic there. Patmos, Rak, Raki. He was on a rocky island. Why was he exiled there? Revelation 1 tells us, for the word of God and for the testimony which he bore. Testimony, the truth. The word of God, the truth. In these last days, brothers and sisters, those leaders, those seven Adventist leaders that hate the truth, they want us to come to Patmos, not the physical little Patmos, but a different Patmos. Which Patmos is that? Well, that church they just built, can you find truth there? No, brothers and sisters. Why would you call the church Patmos? Hmm? What would you call it there? Patmos. Well, again, let's get some more understanding. Ring for peace, they said. Here's what it represents. Representatives of all major religions from some 100 countries come together and collaborate to protect our earth. Remember, Mother Earth as part of a holistic vision of peace dialogue is a key part of ring for peace 19 religion for peace ring for peace 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 what comes after that sudden destruction and as daniel chapter 8 also says what the men of sin will use in these last days to bring about the destruction of many daniel chapter 8 we read in verse 23 and in the latter time of their kingdom when the transgressors are come to the full a king of fierce countenance and understanding dark sentences shall stand up and his power shall be mighty but not by his own power and he shall destroy wonderfully notice how the bible used the word wonderfully it was a joy for them to kill people and shall prosper and practice and shall destroy the mighty and the holy people. And through his policy also, he shall cause craft to prosper in his hand. And he shall magnify himself in his heart. And by peace shall destroy many. He shall also stand up against the prince of princes. But he shall be broken without hand as Daniel chapter 2 tells us. By peace he shall deceive many. And he cast the truth to the ground. And who is helping Popery again to do this? To destroy many by peace. And to cast the truth of God to the ground. The General Conference. 
woman chosen to lead religions for peace as others urge greater female visibility on the same day that a prominent woman urge greater inclusion of female leaders in religions for peace rebecca assistant to the di director of whom now adventist development and relief agency that's the general conference in germany said i think that women are very important for the dialogue and to raise voice for women around the world and different countries different religions and different situations she said i want to do more for myself so the general conference had a representative there at the event you could see on the right side of your screen the religion for peace the ring for peace event they had adra there now question why in the world adra was there i thought adra as it says on the screen is an adventist development and relief agency what was adra trying to relieve there hmm? what was the emergency i thought adra was is an organization that that helps especially when there's a calamity, earthquake, uh, cyclones, uh, you, know, you, you name it, a natural disaster. What was the natural disaster there at that event? Hmm? What was the natural disaster? <laughs> there was no natural disaster. Why were they there? Well, to worship nature. Remember, as we read from the article, they elected a woman. Remember, Mother Earth, they, that movement elected a woman as the leader symbolizes worshiping a female deity symbolizing worshiping mother earth yes we sent a representative there then ted wilson is going to tell you as we quoted before the middle part of this the seventh day adventist church is not and never will be engaged in ecumenical activities as defined as compromising our precious belief in christ and his 28th 28 fundamental beliefs as expressed by the church now how many of you now believe this after what we just covered what we just saw there how many of us believe that the seventh-day adventist church by that he means the general conference is not and never will be engaged in ecumenical activities oh brothers and sisters what a lie how many of us believe that meanwhile at the same event while adra was there representing the general conference this is what they were worshiping listen now work together or fail muslim woman chosen as leader at international interfaith gathering you see the movement the circle there the coming together the peace sign which is a demonic peace sign and then the arrow in the center of your screen pointing to religion for peace and then to the right side of your screen you can see the arrow pointing to the ring and as you see those so-called religious leaders coming together to worship the devil in the form of that ring yet we send Adra there because there was a natural disaster let's move on declaration of the 10th world assembly of religions for peace religions for peace website we commit to urgent action against the climate crisis so what's the agenda climate crisis you see it we will mobilize religious communities to protect the earth including the promotion of green congregations leaders and partners in the fight against environmental degradation our indigenous brothers and sisters reminds us when what now mother earth suffers human beings suffer when human beings suffer what happened next mother earth suffers since when we had a mother that was called mother earth now notice on the article the picture there on the left side you see those witches there in that circle it's the same circle that you see on the right side of your screen that those leaders were standing under same circle you can see there 
It's the same circle that we saw the Adventist leaders as well. They just inaugurated, they just opened this place for the quote-unquote community, they say, to come and worship. Yes, paganism at its best. Let's continue. We gather in hope, convinced that the sacred, who is the sacred there? That's their God. Calls all humanity into shared responsibility for our what? Common good. Care for one another, the earth, and its entire web of life. The supreme good for us is the sacred. Who is that? Even as we understand it differently, the common good includes the earth with its air, water, soil, and web of life. Pure paganism, brothers and sisters. It doesn't matter the way you understand, as they say here. You understand God. It doesn't matter your belief about God. Let's just leave that aside for the sake of the common good. Let's worship the earth. Let's come together to save the planet from climate change. And as our leaders have already told us, this is our position when it comes to climate change. They believe fully in climate change. They believe, along with the Pope, to take uh, necessary actions, even to depopulate the earth, uh, sacrificing people to uh, Mother Earth uh, to save the planet, uh, as Revelation chapter 13, uh, verse 12 says they would do. Here is a picture here. From the same meeting, religions for peace. You can see the ring for peace there. And then they said, caring for our common future. Seriously, do we have a common future with the pagans? Do we have a common future with them? No. My Bible tells me that those who reject the truth, those who reject the way, the truth, and the life shall perish, unfortunately. It is not God's will for them to perish, but because they are in rebellion, they have joined Satan and Popery into this rebellion against the truth, against Christ himself, then the destruction will, will come. Unless, unless your, your coming future is that same destruction that the Bible mentioned in that I mentioned, then yes, join them into caring for their coming future. Caring for the coming future. And again, Ted Wilson said, don't worry about that. We've never been involved and we will never be, be involved in ecumenism. When we can see the evidences for ourselves. Well, let's look at something else here to show the lie from Ted Wilson. This is from AdventistMission.org. Ted Wilson points Russian political and religious leaders to what? To the Bible. Now, let me pause here. This was during the 500th anniversary of the Reformation. When did Ted Wilson celebrate that Reformation? Was he, like Martin Luther, protesting against Rome? No, he was in Russia with Rome representatives and Rome daughters in ecumenical gatherings. We've covered this in so many videos before. And then the Seventh-day Adventist Church, or I should say General Conference, dared to tell us that, well, Ted Wilson was pointing to the Bible. He was helping those political and religious leaders to see how the Bible comes to life. He was reminding them, according to the General Conference, about the Reformation. Now, Ted Wilson had an eight sermon, well, let me back up, it's not, it was not a sermon, a speech for, that lasted eight minutes. Now, half of those eight minutes were being translated by uh, another Adventist pastor in Russian. So really, his speech was four minutes or less because a big part of that was being translated in Russian. And then yet we read, Ted Wilson points Russian political and religious leaders to Bible. Anniversary of Protestant Reformation. Ted Wilson, president of the Seventh-day Adventist World Church, encouraged top clergy 
and government leaders in Russia's capital to uphold the principles of the Protestant Reformation and to seek a God-guided reformation where? Of the heart. Yes, don't protest against Rome, but of the heart. What in the world does that mean? Are we supposed to keep quiet? No, of the heart. And then they're going to tell you he was there preaching the third angel's message. But how did Martin Luther influence others when he stood up against Rome? Was it from the heart? Yeah, it's just talking about of the heart. You know, don't, don't raise the, uh, any, any kind of argument. Is that how Martin Luther handled it? Well, he said, here I stand. I can do no other. Martin Luther started a protest against Rome. And he nailed his 95 pieces questioning the doctrines of Rome versus that of the Bible. Well, let me quote this for you here. Great Controversy 130. Luther's thesis challenged discussion. Notice it challenged discussion. But no one dare accept the challenge. The questions which he proposed had in a few days spread through all Germany. And in a few weeks, they had sounded throughout Christendom. Now, let me pause here for a moment. Was Ted Wilson's four-minute speech impacted Russia, impacted the whole world? Have we been hearing echoes about it? How those uh, pagans there, Rome representative, how they, they marveled at Ted Wilson's speech as Luther's speech sat or agitated the mind of the people to get them to question Rome and to run to Jesus. No, brothers and sisters, that's not what Ted Wilson did. Listen now. We read one more time. It says, Many devoted Romanists who had seen and lamented the terrible iniquity prevailing in the church, but had to know how to arrest its progress, read the propositions of Luther with great joy, recognizing in them, the propositions, the voice of God. Did they recognize the voice of God when Ted Wilson gave that speech there? Oh, he preached the third angel's message. Yes, that's what they want us to believe. When in reality, he was shaking hands with Rome agent, bowing to Rome. Vatican II ordered the General Conference and Ted Wilson to go to those meetings. Listen now. They felt that the Lord had graciously set his hand to arrest the rap rapidly swelling tide of corruption that was issuing from the Sea of Rome. Princes and magistrates secretly rejoiced that a check was to be put upon the arrogant power which denied the right of appeal from its decisions. Is that how Ted Wilson stirred the mind of those leaders, religious leaders and political leaders who were there? No, brothers and sisters, I don't think so. I think uh, he encouraged them uh, to continue to be in bed uh, with Rome. Let's go back. Uh, and then the Adventist General Conference want us to believe this. Keeping his focus, Ted Wilson, keeping his focus on church mission, Wilson also emphasized practical Christianity and the three angels' messages. Yes, those are key words to deceive a conservative Seventh-day Adventist. <laughs> yes. Then it says, in his remarks at a Moscow forum commem commemorating the 500th anniversary of Martin Luther's nailing of the 95 Theses to a church door in Germany. Meanwhile, while the Seventh-day Adventist leaders want us to believe, that's what Ted Wilson was doing there. You can watch the videos for yourself. They are on this article. And you can, you're going to see it has nothing to do. As a matter of fact, there were two videos that came with the article. One was Ted Wilson's speech. And then another video was a video that Ted Wilson made by himself, talking directly now to the worldwide Seventh-day Adventist church, telling Seventh-day Adventists this is what he preached. When in reality, if you compare the speech that he 
gave in front of the political leaders and the religious leaders with the video that he was speaking to the camera to the World War Seven Adventist Church are two different things. What he said in that video was different than what he said in the speech. Meanwhile, he's enjoying this. There it is, brothers and sisters. There is Ted Wilson with his pagan friends, with Rome agents. Don't worry, he has never been involved in ecumenical activities, as it says. And that will never happen. Don't worry. Let's just pretend we don't see this. Let's just pretend. And another picture here, you could see this priest, which is Roman Catholic Archbishop Celestino Miglio Re, representative of the papacy. And then far left arrow, you can see there, Ted Wilson, and to Ted Wilson's right is the seven Adventist leaders there in uh, Russia. He was the one translating for Ted Wilson. And then uh, Ted Wilson's wife, and then to his wife left. This is another Adventist leader there. He is the uh, religious director, uh, religious liberty director for the Seventh-day Adventist Church in Russia. I can't remember his name right now. But you can see all of them listening to this priest that, or this archbishop that the Pope sent. And all of them are just sisters to Rome and daughters to Rome. Don't worry. We are not involved in those activities. Ted Wilson has never been to them and this will never take place. Don't worry. Meanwhile, behind closed doors, you have Ted Wilson and the Religious Liberty Director of Seven Adventist Church in Russia there. They met behind closed doors with Rome's agent, with the daughters of Babylon. Don't worry, we've never been involved in any such activities. Listen to what we read here. As the storm approaches, a large class who have professed faith in the third angel's message, but have not been sanctified through obedience to the truth, there's the truth there again, abandon their position and join the ranks of the opposition by uniting with the world and partaking of its spirit, they have come to view matters in nearly the same light. And then the test is brought. They are, when the test is brought, they are prepared to choose the easy, popular side. Well, there's Ted Wilson with the easy and popular side. To the left side of your screen, that picture there, that is another priest representing Rome. And there's Ted Wilson there. Yes, sir. The storm is here, that large class indeed, who have professed faith in the third angel's message. What have they done? They have united with the opposition. Yes, because the test is here, and they have been partaking of the opposition spirits. They joined their ranks, and now they have become the bitterest enemies of the truth, remember. That means they believe the lie, according to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, the strong delusion. Here's another picture or pictures there. Those are Rome agents from each denomination, even uh, bottom right. That's a Muslim leader there. We, we have the Orthodox and uh, top, middle, and left picture. That's the same uh, cardinal from Rome delivering the Pope's message to the assembly that joined Rome because of a command that came straight from Vatican II. Next picture, there's Ted Wilson with his pagan friends, with the opposition. Again, another picture. There's Ted Wilson, a close-up picture. And then there's the priest far left. Mm. No, don't worry. Let's pretend we did not see that. Let's just go by what Ted Wilson tells us. Yes, brothers and sisters. Are we blind? Listen to what Spirit of Prophecy tells us here. The Word of God plainly declares that His law is to be scorned, trampled upon by the world. There will be an extraordinary prevalence of iniquity. The professed Protestant world 
will form a confederacy with whom? With the men of sin. And what will happen? And the church and the world will be in corrupt harmony. Here, the great crisis is coming upon the world. The scriptures teach that popery is to regain its lost supremacy and that the fires of persecution will be kindled, rekindled through the time serving, what's the word, concessions of the so-called Protestant world. So what will give rise to popery? What will bring persecution upon those who keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus because of the concessions of the so-called Protestants to Rome? They are conceding to Rome, yielding, uniting with Rome. Don't worry, Ted Wilson is not doing such things. He says one thing, but then he's doing something else. Matthew chapter 23. Notice what we read in Matthew chapter 23. As Jesus was warning the disciples of Phariseeism, Jesus said to the disciples in Matthew chapter 23, He said to the disciples, warning them, of Phariseeism. Verse 1, Then spake Jesus to the multitude and to his disciples, saying, The scribes and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. All therefore who whatsoever they bid you observe, that observe and do. But do not ye after their works. For they say, and do not. For they bind heavy burdens and grievous to be born, and lay them on men's shoulders, but they themselves will not move them with one of their fingers but all their works they do for to be seen of men they make broad their phylacteries and enlarge the borders of their garments and love the uttermost rooms at feasts and the chief seats in the synagogues and greetings in the markets and to be called of men rabbi rabbi but be not ye called rabbi, for one is your master, even Christ, and all ye are brethren. And call no man your father upon the earth, for one is your father, which is in heaven. And how in the world can we be meeting with the so-called fathers? Hmm? We should be exposing the so-called fathers. Oh, brothers and sisters, wake up, seven Adventists. Wake up, and as Jesus went on to say, But woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, verse 13, hypocrites, for ye shut up the kingdom of heaven against men, for ye neither go in yourselves, neither suffer ye them that are entering to go in. So they are shutting away the kingdom of God from you. They are bringing satanic delusions upon us as a people. To shut away the kingdom of God from us. To keep us away from the kingdom of God. It's time to wake up seven Adventists. It's time to realize that uh, our leaders have been involved for many, many years now in pagan rituals. And worshipping Mother Earth. It's time to follow the Lamb whithersoever He takes us. Let's have a word of prayer. Loving Father God, which art in heaven, again I pray to have mercy upon us, have mercy upon your people. We have truth, truths that you have given us that are available to us from the Bible and spirit of prophecy. Yet, just like Catholicism, the majority of us within the church tend not to read the truth for themselves, to know the truth for themselves. They tend to go by what the leaders say. Have mercy upon us, Lord, before it's too late. Forgive us of all our sins, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen.